I know heading into free agency looking for supplementary scoring was something that was high up on the priority list. Um, maybe just discuss that pursuit and where you think you are with that. Well, I think, you know, as when I was announced uh, two months ago, what I was hoping to accomplish over the, the um, summertime, still, still you know, two months to go, obviously was to uh, get another goal, goaltender to go with Koskinen. Um, obviously, Dave Tippett had um, Mike Smith in uh, Dallas. I think they were together. Um, very, very competitive guy. He's, uh, he can handle a puck. Um, he's a motivated athlete. We talked uh, to him a couple of times this week, so uh, we feel good about our, our, our tandem and goal. And then uh, on the back end, we wanted to uh, create more competition. We need we need to find more players that can get uh, double digit goal, double digit goals. Um, Marcus Granlund uh, is a player that I think the last three years had 19. I think he scored eight in about 50 something games. And had 12 goals last year. So we think his his uh, resume says that he should be able to score double digit goals. Um, and you know we've signed some. We, you know we we signed the Nygaard from Sweden. We've signed uh, Gaeta Haas from Switzerland. Uh, signed. I know Thomas Yurko. Obviously, we drafted him in Detroit. Uh, we're trying to create uh, more competition at the bottom part of the roster. We're also trying to have the bottom part of the roster play with uh, with more pace. Um, obviously, signed uh, Jujar uh, Kara to a two-year contract and. Uh, so we think that we've started that. I uh, don't think that we're done, but uh, that's that's uh, part of where we're at. All right. So just to follow up, you made the decision yesterday. You did on Sacra to buy him out to create a little yes. space. Um, you said you're not done, but in a perfect world, with these, a lot of these deals seem to be shorter-term deals. And is that also part of sort of the mindset and the approach that you have? Uh, and then just maybe just a thought on the opportunities that open up. Uh, on defense with Sekera now out of the mix? Well, the Sekera decision was tough. I, I don't know uh, I don't know him, uh, but certainly in talking to all the people uh, around here um, that, that have worked with him on an everyday basis, they hold him in the highest regard. Um, <clears throat> I had, you know, I, one of the things that, you know, when I was in Detroit, I, I have great respect for, for pros and the guys that come, they're role models. And that certainly was what was laid out to me in Sekera, was that he was a role model. Um, you know, he's had a tough couple of years the last two years. I think he's played 60 games in the last two years combined. Uh, obviously, the injury bug has hit him big time. Um, and I would say that uh, you know we needed to create some cap space and some some opportunity to to do some things. Um, and I also think that. Uh, we're trying to get some of the younger defensemen uh, to put, have an opportunity heading into training camp. The, the guys that played in uh, the young defensemen that played in uh, in Bakersfield. So that was that was uh, ultimately all the reasoning around uh, the uh, the buyout. Um, again, we have a little bit of cap space le left. We'll see what uh, you know. So on the one-year contract, certainly that was part of part of the philosophy is. Trying to be competitive. I think when I said when I when I stood here two two months ago, on the short term we want to compete for the playoffs in 1920. Uh, on the longer term we want to try to build. Certainly the building is going to be about some of the the drafting and the developing and ultimately, you know, the pushing players through the system onto your roster. Um, there's some young players here that get, they're going to need some time, but I think they can be uh, um, real important players to this team going forward. But on the short term. Um, we needed more. We need more competition. We want to get more pace to the bottom part of the roster. Uh, obviously, in Mike Smith, we think we've got two goaltenders that we can create a competition. Uh, both are hard workers. Both are really competitive. Uh, we believe they're going to push one another to play real well and give and, and allow us to have goaltending as a strength. Um, now we'll see what you know. That's that's sort of where we're at today. You're really kind of outlined your plan a month ago and didn't deviate. You said you weren't going to bring in anybody really on defense and looked at forward, bottom six, and goaltending. When you look at your defense now and what you have on the right side, and you look at guys maybe who aren't big puck movers, so do you look at like a Pearson or a Benning or, or even Jones to play on his offside to be able to be the puck movers on your right defense this year? You know, um, I think when you... That question you've asked, some of those are going to be answered in training camp. I think we've got to get to training camp. We've got to, we've got to play preseason games. We've got to play games. Um, 
You know, I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, at, at, at pick eight we took Broberg. You know, the, imp the importance of defense in the National Hockey League today. So, you know, you got Samarukov, you got Bouchard, you got Broberg, young defensemen. They're going to need some time. Um, but we've got some defensemen in, um, in Bakersfield, you know, Lagesson. Pearson's coming over from obviously from Sweden. You got Jones, uh, Bear. Might have missed somebody, but but they're they're players that they're, they can compete for spots in uh, in training camp. So um, I think that ultimately, as as I weighed as I weighed whether we stood stood pat and didn't buy out uh, Sekra, or we did. Um, at the end of the day, we needed some cap space to try to to uh, create a little bit of of, of opportunity to do something. Um, but also the push of defensemen, um, I think that's one of the strengths of this organization. Um, and the top four guys you're talking about, for the most part, top fours, you've got to do one of two things. You've either got to draft them and develop them, or you've got to pay a ton of money to get them. And um, we don't have a ton of money to get them, and I think we do have top four defensemen, but, but I'm not sure that they're ready right now, but I think that I believe they're pushing through the system. And in Granlin, when you sign him, is the plan to have him as a center, even though he's played a lot of wing in Vancouver, and similar with Jujar Kara. Where do you see those two fitting in the lineup? Well, he can play all three positions. You know, we talked to him. I think he's most comfortable on the wing. He can play center. Um, you, know, I, you know, as we sit here today, obviously we need a third-line center. Gaita Haas is a center. Um, Jujar can play center. Um, uh, Granlin can play center, but certainly we're on the lookout to see if we can find another guy between now and training camp that that can uh, they can play center. But Jim, oh, oh over there. Um, Jason. Uh, yes. Did you circle back to him, or what? What was the reasoning there? Circle back in what certain what term? Well, he waited a long while. Did you try? To I I talked to him about uh, two weeks ago. Um, to um, his agent Pat Morris, I'm not sure if it was about two weeks ago, and then uh, talked to him. I think early this week, and I think that you know, obviously, um, you know, he had 22 goals. He's popular in the locker room. He's a right shot. Um, we wanted to explore the market, and I, th you know, I think in the cap world, what you try to do is you try to get the most bang for your buck on every on every signing. Not every not everyone works out. Um, we wanted to explore the market. I stayed in touch with Pat Morris. You know, Pat and I had a sort of a joke today when we talked to Alex. I think this week, Pat Morris might have called me at 10 o'clock every night, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you know, Alex Chason was uh, one of the people that we talked about. So, uh, so I've been in touch with with Alex's camp, with his agent, all week. One more, you don't have a top six. Four. A winger for Nugent Hopkins to play with yet? Or are you still looking for one of those? Always looking, Jim. Always looking. Yeah. Was Nyquist just too expensive, or what? Because you know him from Detroit. I think what he had five five cap number. It's a big number. <laughs> I'm happy for Gus. He's I like I like I, I'm happy for Gus. I I say that for Caesars. It's, it's obviously it's a it, you know when you when you look at our team and you put down what what. Uh, What's what what's committed? Um, it was a big number for us. Uh, Ken, you mentioned you do have some cap room at your disposal. How close do you want to get to the cap before training camp? And do you envision now that it'll be a trade that you'd have to make to augment the lineup, aside from rather than a, uh, a free agent sign? Um, I think you know. I, th I think when we get to training camp, you know, I think you'd like to be at least you know a million and a half. You'd like to have a player for, you know, you're not going to go any less than a million dollars less, closer to the cap, because, you know, it's 925. Uh, I think ideally you'd love to be, uh, you know, a million five to two um, below the cap so that you've got, uh, at any point in time, you can bring up a couple of players, two or three players, depending on what their cap number is, 700 to, to 900. Is that... Yes. Yeah, that's that's the question. I think when when you you know when we build your lines on a notepad today, yep. your top six still has 
you know, maybe a couple of bottom six guys in it, maybe a couple guys, certainly a guy like Negard or somebody who has mm -hmm. never played here. Uh, oh, I don't want to ask if you're satisfied with it, but how much work does it need before it can get a passing grade in your top six by training camp? Well, I won't give any grades to training camp until I watch the players on the ice, Mark. I, I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I got to watch them play. Um, certainly, we'd like to add another player that, that, that has the potential to score 20 goals. Um, we'll, see what, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. So, uh, can the agent for Brett Connolly mentioned that Edmonton was certainly in the mix there. Uh, Wayne Simmons might have made sense, especially given the term length of his deal. Is it a different challenge in Edmonton, not that it's Edmonton, just that it's in the West, versus guys that have spent a number of years playing in the Eastern Conference? Some guys like to stay out East. Is it, does it limit the pool a bit? Or? I didn't find that at all. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's everything, your decisions are cap related today. And I think at the end of the day, um, you know, all the names that you, you're going to mention up front, uh, other than the guys that, that, that commanded, uh, you know, um, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven million dollar salaries. Um, for the most part, I talked to uh, all of them or their agents for sure. Um, and I think that it was, um, you know, if, again, I think it's cap related. I think it's about how much how much cap space you got. Those teams today that made a lot of noise had a ton of cap space, and it goes in cycles. And somewhere down the road, we're going to have a ton of cap space, and somebody else isn't going to have a ton of cap space. So right now, uh, we don't have a ton of cap space. We're going to bring in play. You know, you you just heard the plan. Somewhere down the road, we're going to have a ton of cap space, and we're going to make uh, make noise. But certainly, um, when you've got the core of players here. That, that this organization's got, uh, it's very intriguing to players outside to play with those kind of players. Uh, Ken, can you, this is your first time in this fishbowl. Uh, all your years in hockey and everything like that, can you contrast? Detroit was a fishbowl too. Yeah, well, I'm sure it was, but in this particular one. Uh, can you contrast what, what uh, this last two months have been like for you? And also, I mean, there. I have to tell you to the extent this fan base is starving for, but their expectations were somewhere up there. Uh, do you, is there a sense of disappointment from that point of view in uh, what you were able to deliver? You know, I try to make decisions with no emotion. Um, and I would say to you, you know, I live in, I try to live in a cocoon as much as I can. Um, and you go, you come, you know, every, we, we were here every day from Sunday, I think we, I don't know, we showed up here at 7.30 and went home at 7.30 and worked the phones, talked to people, had our line up on the board, looked at our cap space, looked at our commitments, um, you know, looked at the other side of the board with our prospects to project when those players, um, you know, would hit this side of the board. And you know, we did that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, you know, you wake up today, so... It, to me, it's about the process. It's about every day, every day, going about the process that eventually when you've got to make a decision, you've made a decision based upon all the information at hand. And unless you sit in that room and you're in the room of the 31 organizations, you don't have all that information. I've been on the, I've been on the phone with the agents. Um, I've talked to every general manager in the National Hockey League. Um, we've looked at the board, we've looked at everything, and you go and you eventually make a decision based upon all that information. Lots of people don't have all that information, the information that, that I've got at hand. So I don't have any disappointment whatsoever. We made the decisions based upon all the information at, at hand. Ken, to, to paraphrase, you, you kind of said that uh, to be in the free agent game, you have to be willing or comfortable to, to overpay or else you're not going to be in the game. And so for today, did you feel that the, the players that commanded the money they did, it was a little too out of your, you know, out of your price range, comfort range to, to ultimately, ultimately go, you know, those four years or, or multiple like, large contracts for, for, for players today? Did I feel... No, I don't. I don't think so. No, I think. I think again. I was just saying to Terry, 
you know, based upon all the information, we made the, I made the decision, whatever decision I made or didn't make was based upon um, a lot of research, a lot of talk, a lot of planning, looking forward and trying to um, determine where we are today and where we want to get to. So uh, I've, been a manager, <clears throat> I've been a manager for 22 years. I know when it's time to pay and when it's time not to pay. But I also know that every decision, we talked about this, not every decision works out, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go through a process eventually to make your decisions. And um, on the short, you know, you're, you're hearing the same things over again, because you, you, on the short term, we're trying to compete for a playoff spot in 1920, but ultimately, I'm trying to oversee and build this team into being um, a really good elite team in the Western Conference. And we made decisions today based upon those plans. Ken, you signed Kara to the two-year contract. Yep. The last year he didn't do very well. You, you do that because he's your own player and you, you haven't seen much of him and you're hoping that he breaks through? Three goals last year. In yeah, we had 11 the year before. Um, you know, he... You need dimensions, Jim. You know, I mean, everybody's not the same size and the same skill set. He's a he's a big guy that uh, brings a different dimension to our hockey club. Um, you know, he can play in the center. He can play left wing. He's a big guy. Um, you know, again, I you know I lived in Detroit. I'm certainly counting on uh, or, or not listening to the information of the people that are here on an everyday basis. Um, and again, he had 11 goals two years ago. He had a tough year last year, three goals. So. Uh, you know, when you look in the guide and, res uh, guide and record book at lots of players, you know, some, in some years they don't have very good years statistically. So we're expecting him to, to bounce back and be closer to the player he was two years ago. And where are you on uh, Mr. Pugliarvi, who doesn't want to play here? Uh, where am I on Jesse? You know, I've talked to a lot of teams. Um, not sure where I'm at, but... Uh, Talked to a lot of teams about a lot of different ideas about Jesse, so I'm not, I'm not sure where it's going to go. We'll see. Just to follow up on that, Ken, are, are you um, are, to play the patient game with that? We've seen a lot of young guys, you know, at different times or even older players get frustrated for whatever reason. Is patience the, the key here? You don't feel like you're in a position where you have to be rushed into anything? Well, I think when I make a decision, it's it's got to be in the best interest of the of the team. And until, until there's something that I think makes really good sense to, to our team, uh, I, I won't pull the trigger. So n nothing, nothing has, uh, certainly he's expressed um, frustration and disappointment at the way things have, have gone in his Oiler career. Um, you know, obviously you guys talked to his, I think Mark talked to his agent uh, 10 days ago or something, when, when, and uh, uh, he doesn't, uh, I don't think he's planning on playing for the Edmonton Oilers, but I've had players tell me that in Detroit, and they did play for Detroit. So, um, and in some cases they've told me that, and they didn't play, and I ended up trading him. But ultimately I think the most important thing is if I do trade him, it's got to be a deal that I feel good about, that I think is in the best interest of this team. And if something like that isn't out there, then Jesse's going to have to make a, a decision. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Good. Thanks.